Yes. Um, welcome everybody. Yes, Thank you for good. coming today. We're so excited. This is actually our first time we've had any kind of in-person get-together since the beginning of the pandemic. So that's very exciting. Um, so Preservation Burlington recognizes historic buildings that represent outstanding efforts on the part of their owners in preservation, restoration, maintenance, and rehabilitation. In doing so, we promote continuous effort, efforts in heritage preservation as well as highlight its benefits. We also recognize individuals who have made significant contributions to the betterment of our community life. Um, tonight, we're going to have four awards. Tonight, today, we're going to have four awards. Um, we will be doing the residential award. We have an award for a historic outbuilding. Uh, we have our Spirit of Preservation Award, and we'll tell you what these are as they come along. And finally, we have our Ray O'Connor Award. So in order to be eligible for an award, properties must be located in Burlington and be at least 50 years of age, and projects must have been completed within the three previous calendar years. Um, we do make some considerations according to, uh, based on, not according, I should say, based on the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Restoration and Rehabilitation as well. So, did this go dark? I'm going to have um, Marge Allard come and uh, give the first award. Okay, our residential award this year was really pretty. It is uh, an example of the style of houses, which there are thousands in Burlington, on vernacular Queen Anne cottage style, and it is on 11 Ward Street. And uh, the owners have done a fantastic job of restoring it. The house have a date of 1893, and the first resident was George Brown, who at one time. Uh, had a nice green business out back. Otherwise, he was a peddler and uh, also an employee of C.P. Smith uh, Flower Feed and Grain. There are a lot of those stores in Burlington. I want to uh, read uh, the nomination that friends and uh, neighbors of Caitlin and Scott sent us so you will realize how much they deserve this award. And this is from Julia DiPietro. Hello, my husband Alex and I are friends with the owners of 11 Ward Street, Caitlin O'Shea and Scott Newman, are both historic preservation professionals and are nominating their house because of the truly amazing transformation and restoration of the property between December 2019 and August 2021. When they bought the house, it was in terrible shape, covered with striped pink asbestos tiles, a roof that had not been maintained in 20 years, non-existent landscaping, and an interior that showed decades of deferred maintenance. Kate and Scott saw the immense potential of the house and began work as soon as they bought it. Their goal, as they explained it to us, was to let the house reveal its inherent historic outline Scott and Kate stripped off the asbestos shingles themselves and began a painstaking <laughs> restoration of the exterior, repairing and restoring the scalloped gable shingles, rebuilding loft trim, and restoring the clapboards, and replacing the lead-painted windows with appropriate new windows. The Newmans have two young children, and uh, Lead assisted the project with targeted lead remediation work to help ma make the house safe for the children. Other key restoration work was undertaken by Heritage Environmental, Fuller Construction, and Steve LaBerge. Not only has the restoration saved the house at 11 Ward Street, but has lifted up the streetscape and led to revival of other nearby historic properties. So congratulations to you. You did a terrific job. Thank you so much. Um, hi everybody, thanks for coming um, to the awards this year. Um, it's really good to be getting back to it. If you guys are, have been following the news or paying attention to things in Burlington, there's been a lot of um, outbuildings and discussion of the historic outbuildings of which we have hundreds and hundreds, you know, and it's really hard. Uh, it's just so easy to 
let them go by, you know, fall by the wayside or uh, demolition by neglect, um, inadvertently or otherwise. And, and so we constantly get a bunch of, um, at the design advisory board and the zoning office, we get a lot of requests for demolition. And it's a hard sell to tell people to restore their historic buildings, you know, or that even a small little garage in the back is historic and contributing to the property's value. Um, so every once in a while, we'll find somebody uh, who goes that extra effort to, to save their, their outbuilding, you know, sees the utilitarian value in it, and they're, you know, I mean, I'm a preservationist, so I think they're all adorable and have all kinds of, of potential. But anyway, so it's kind of my honor to um, give this award to uh, John and Dale Wadhams of 401 South Union Street, happen to be live nearby. Um, John told me when he was starting this project and he was going to work on, he wanted to know if I could help with the historic doors. And of course I said yes, and then I didn't have any time to do it. And he's still not mad at me, or maybe a little mad at me. <laughs> um, but over the course of, what, a year? Uh, John picked this building up, this hip roof, uh, 1926 building for housing Model A cars, restored the windows, picked it up, pulled the slab out of the way, dug everything down, did a new floating slab, replaced the sill, sistered everything up, squared it up, dropped it back down, restored the win one window, replaced another window that was gone or missing, and then only had to the siding around the bottom where they had to lift it up um, and now and then well I'm trying to decide how much I want to say here so then he relined the whole inside so it's got a new electrical um, I'm so jealous it's like this perfect in the backyard wood shop with 220 power and tools and knotty pine everywhere and heat right so anyway John, that <laughs> you want to come up and um, get my award. Get your award, and I, he I swore me to secrecy. So there's lots of bits of the project that I'm not allowed to talk about, but I think this would look really great somewhere where that new fancy light oh, shines. Really? And it is gold. <laughs> oh, it's solid gold. Yeah. So thank you, Ron. It's going to tarnish in three months or so. Way to go, John. Thanks, John. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Great. Hello everyone, I'm Devin Coleman, um, board member, and I have to say that uh, we usually don't associate the prairies of the Midwest with Vermont, but the house at 308 College Street is a little bit of that Midwestern prairie in Burlington. It's perhaps our closest connection. Uh, this house was built in 1917. Uh, by the Kieslick Construction Company for Oscar Heininger. And it features, as you can see in the picture, a very low pitch hipped roof, broad overhanging eaves, a nice uh, sheltered front porch, and overall a very horizontal feel. That's the prairie coming in, the prairie style. This is a perfect example of the prairie style and really one of the only examples in the whole state. Uh, the prairie style originated in Chicago and of course it's associated with Frank Lloyd Wright and in fact this house is often erroneously attributed to a Frank Lloyd Wright design. It is not. <laughs> so we can lay that to rest. Where it, where it did come from is actually the National Builder magazine which is published out of Chicago and architect William Arthur Bennett uh, designed this suburban stucco residence. And with the uh, Kieslet Construction Company building lots of houses around Burlington at this time, most likely, likely subscribed to this magazine, they were able to get a set of the plans and built the house. And we know that for sure because that set of plans is framed on the wall in the house. So we're, we're pretty, <laughs> pretty certain about that. So today the owners of the house are being awarded the Spirit of Preservation Award. Uh, for their long-term care and maintenance of this building. Jim and Jane Wick purchased the house in 1982. That might come as a shock to you, it's 40 years ago. <laughs> and over that time, uh, they've consistently undertaken the routine maintenance that is essential to keeping a building like this in good shape. Repairing 
cracked slate shingles on the roof, keeping a good coat of paint on the stucco and the wood trim, fixing things that need repair before they become major problems. So the whole point of the Spirit of Preservation Award is to acknowledge those property owners who never had to do the gut rehab. They never had to do the extreme home makeover to save their building. They just did the maintenance. And this is a really good example and reminder to all of us that maintenance is, in fact, preservation. So we want to thank you for your uh, care of this building over four decades. And I also want to acknowledge that Sylvia Holden, who is the niece of Oscar Heininger, is here with us, and her son, Alfred. Um, so we've got some, some direct descendants of the, the property here. And really a, a neat building, a great use. It's a law office now and we're very thankful to the Wicks for taking such good care of it. Our final award is the Ray O'Connor Award. Um, this is our award that's um, given to individuals or, um, in recognition of their significant contribution to the betterment of our community life here in Burlington. Um, this year's award goes to Bill Truix. Um, unfortunately, Bill Truix passed away early in April, so we are giving um, the award posthumously, but we are just really excited um, to be honoring him with this award. He has definitely earned it, and I will tell you why. Um, Bill graduated from Dartmouth College, and then he went to Harvard University Graduate School of Design. In 1968, he opened an architecture firm here in Burlington with Gene Alexander. And then in 1972, uh, merged with Bill DeGroote and Tom Collins. That's when you form, they formed, <laughs> the architectural form firm Truex Collins. Um, they were focused on urban planning and the design of building that served a public purpose. Uh, so some of the buildings around Burlington that were designed by Bill, um, he had uh, deep and near to his heart the Red Cross. So he designed the Red Cross Center on North Prospect and a number of Red Cross centers ac across the country. Um, the U.S. Coast Guard Station on the waterfront. Uh, Visitor Center at Mount Independence. Uh, the Heal Welcome Center at St. Michael's College. And finally, one of our favorite spaces in Burlington, the Church Street Marketplace. Um, this is probably the best example of his architecture and space design that was focused on, an, it was an, an egalitarian design, so it was for the public use, or otherwise known in a seven days <laughs> article as an outdoor living room. Um, the Burlington Marketplace, the Church Street Marketplace, uh, was finished right around 1981, and that coincided when Bernie Sanders was elected as mayor. Um, so it really s signified this new movement, movement in Burlington and Vermont history. In 2001, he was awarded a fellow in the AIA, which is the American Institute of Architects, and he's only one of four Vermont architects to receive that, that status. Um, he was a leader in both local, state, and national chapters of the AIA, and he was instrumental in founding the Norwich Architecture Department. It keeps on going, <laughs> amazingly. <laughs> Um, Bill also was very active in um, nonprofit organizations. He was the director of the Preservation Trust of Vermont, as well as Burlington City Arts. He was board chair of the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum, and he served on the Design Review Board, the Urban Renewal Agency, and the Chittenden County, County Regional Planning Commission. Um, one of the things I, I do have some pictures. It's hard to talk and do this. Some um, of the pictures, thanks to the Seven Days articles of some great <laughs> photos of Bill. And on the right, you'll see him with Gene Alexander. And um, this final slide where you can see the original plans for the Church Street Marketplace. 
if I was reading about Church Street Marketplace, and I, I am an architectural historian, so I know a lot about creation of pedestrian ways from where there used to be cars, but it is interesting to see the pictures and hear the stories of how people used to like to be seen and see and drive down Church Street. <laughs> and that is just unfathomable to, both, to most of us, especially me. I've, I've been in Burlington for almost 20 years and I still can't fathom it. Um, so finally, what I want to say about Bill, um, I want to also honor him for something he didn't do. Um, at one point, I'm not sure what year, there was a plan for a highway, a highway to stretch along the water fruit waterfront from Route 127 to the south end. Um, this is something he put his foot down on. He said, this isn't going to happen. And he stayed true to his word. It didn't happen. And we have the beautiful waterfront and recreation center that we have today. So I want to um, really stress how happy we are to be giving this award to Bill today. And here we have Matt. You'll be, you'll be receiving the award. Bushy, right? And Carl. Um, would you like to say something? Um, so, um, sure. I'd just like to thank you for this. Um, I'm here on behalf of our entire firm at Truex Collins. And um, it was, we were saddened um, just last month um, when Bill passed away and the outpouring of support has been tremendous. He had such a long, distinguished yeah. <laughs> career. Um, it's just amazing. So thank you.